Hey guys, Mark Armbrust here, RG Skill Builder. Um, purpose of today's video, um, there's been some recent discussion as usual about the, the use of the mysterious peel ply process. Um, so first the disclaimer here, any of us that you ask, I don't care which one of us, you ask what the best way to fiberglass something is, you're going to get somebody who really believes in what they're doing and they'll beat you to death until they convince you that their way is better than anybody else's way and whatever you've done is stupid and your airplane's not going to fly, right? So just keep that in mind that I'm going to show you what I'm doing. If it works for you, great. Um, the way that you should do yours is the way that you like the best, um, right? If it works for you, perfect. Um, so... Uh, keep in mind, I, I make no effort here to say I'm doing this the lightest way possible or anything like that. Uh, my methods may be, you know, some people go extra, extra mile and I'll, I'll go through my surface prep and everything. And I'm sure there'll be a bunch of you out there shaking your head going, what is this guy doing? Right. Um, but the bottom line is I'm building a, you know, a 30 pound, uh, airplane. It's going to be a warbird. Um, which generally gets weathered either by hanger rash or by me on purpose. Um, so the, the finished product uh, is what it is. Um, I think I get a pretty decent uh, finish out of my stuff myself. Um, but uh, again, everybody's got their own way of doing stuff. I'm just going to share mine. First up here is the peel ply stuff. And I'm going to try and edit in. I'll see later on. I'll get the exact pricing on this stuff. I use... Except for today's purpose, I use this here dress liner from fabric.com has been my latest source. Um, I know me and Thomas White had found some on eBay a while back that was a little cheaper maybe and things like that. What we're using here is 100% polyester dress lining, right? That's what's being purchased. Now, if you go to your local fabric store and try and buy this stuff, as Gaines has discovered when he did his bird dog, Oddly enough, I'm building a bird dog myself with this video. Um, he got something that clearly was not 100% polyester. He even admitted that the fabric did not feel correct. This stuff, when you get it, almost looks like silk, right? It's shiny. Um, it's really, really, really thin, which is which uh, I like compared to the regular peel ply, which I'll show you in a second from ACP Composites. Um, <coughs> and it's got a... I don't know if you can hear that on my, my, my cell phone video. Very right, little zippy or, you know, you can hear the, the texture as my nail runs through it. Um, it's really lightweight. Um, if I had to compare it to a fiberglass cloth weight, I'd say it maybe comes out around two ounces, something like that. Um, so it's, it's pretty thin stuff, right? That's my preference. Now, it does come like you see it here, right? They fold it up and stick it in a... Uh, in a box and mail it to you. So you get some minor defects in the material here, right? From being folded, not a problem. I take my my wife's clothes iron and set it to the polyester setting, which is um, medium high, I guess, and iron it real quick um, before I use it. Uh, I, and I cut the piece out first and then just iron them individually, right? Any flaw that you see in this fabric will be in your finished product and you will be using sandpaper and body filler to fix it. So take the two minutes to iron it and you'll save yourself some more sanding, which is the entire point of using the peel ply here, okay? The other roll you see laying here, um, this is, uh, God only knows how old now, but this was what ACP Composites was selling as their peel ply. Um, my understanding is it's essentially the exact same stuff. Well, when I say exact, I mean it's 100% polyester, but it also has some sort of a coating on it to help it release a little easier maybe. Um, I can't say that uh, I feel the need to have that coating. That's why I just use the dress liner and it works for me. Um, this stuff is certainly thicker. Uh, is it two times thicker? Um, eh, maybe. Maybe more like a four ounce cloth. Um, and it certainly does not do compound curves as well. Not that either of these do, and I do know that Thomas has some recently that does compound curves very well. 
Um, and if that's what floats your boat, that's, that's fine. I just honestly don't care that much. I'll, I'll deal with a little flaw here and there with some sand, from some 80 grit and some body filler and I'll fix my, my piece. Um, so, but what I'm gonna do is when we do the demo here, I'm gonna do two different parts for you. One using my dress liner and the other one using specifically this stuff from ACP Composites. Now, if memory serves me right, I wanna say the last time I went to buy this stuff, it was like six bucks a yard. Um, from ACP and the stuff from the fabric store is like two bucks a yard uh, so I made my decision strictly based on you know we're, we're using this stuff that's literally not reusable um, if, if you've done this right what you took off is totally destroyed and I'll show you that uh, at the conclusion of this video um, and uh, it's, it's, it's a total waste what you saved yourself hopefully, is a whole bunch of sanding and the flow coat um, that I've heard so much about but never really had to do, right? Again, the whole purpose of doing this is going from a, a naked piece of wood to a surface that is ready for primer in one step with no sanding. Um, now, it may not be the fastest way to get there, um, depending on what you're using. Um, a polyester resin may actually get you there faster. I don't know. I'm using, um, my resin is ACP, or I'm sorry, it's U.S. Composites resin, right? Uh, that's some old West systems in the background there. I don't, I haven't used that stuff in a while, uh, but I'm not going to throw my pumps away, right? This is the stuff I'm buying. It works out to like half price compared, right? You can see I buy it by the gallon. Um, I don't use a gallon building an airplane by any means, um, but I'll use a gallon building three airplanes, especially if I'm making parts or something, right? Um, I got a, uh, Fokker G1 I'm in the process of throwing together as well. It used a lot of resin because I made a bunch of parts for it. So I keep a bunch of resin on hand and you're talking relatively inexpensive stuff. I don't know, 60, 80 bucks for a gallon of resin shipped. Um, and I got it on hand, um, for me living in Florida, I get it pretty quick. As you can see, it's just in Palm Beach. Um, this stuff compares to the West System resin, in my opinion, right? Especially using the fuel ply process to remove any waxy bloom, right? Compared to that West System stuff, it just takes an additional 24 hours to get to the same hardness level based on nothing scientific other than my fingernail scratching on the surface, right? That's pretty much the only difference I have found with it. Um, and it works really well. Their pumps aren't as uh, nice. They, it's essentially this pump and this pump are the same. And you can see clearly that it's a, a three to one hardener. They're using. So what I did is I used my scale and I figured out what three to one was and put a little mark with a Sharpie on my pump. So I just pump it down to there and I can do one pump of resin, one pump of hardener, and then I mix the, uh, the ever living crap out of it. And I'm talking, I mix my resin for a good 60 to 90 seconds. I've even gone so far as to set a timer before uh, to make sure you are mixing your resin. I know recently somebody used uh, some, uh, some resin for something. I forget where I saw it on the website, but uh, the results were not favorable. Oh, this stuff didn't dry. It didn't cure. Okay, it's epoxy. Epoxy is pretty foolproof. Get the ratios right. Mix it to death and give it 24 to 48 hours to cure, it should go off unless you've somehow contaminated it. Um, unless there's some guys using this really old resin out there without any issue whatsoever, right? So anyhow, that's what we're gonna do. Um, oh, let me show you also what I'm using for cloth. Um, so here's the, the vertical stabilizer, and I've got the parts laid out here, right? That's my piece of, uh, that's the, uh, the dress liner I'm going to use on this piece. And here's my fiberglass cloth, right? I'm using 1.4 ounce cloth, right? And again, this is where somebody's going to go, oh, no, all you need is 0.75. I agree, that is all I need. If you've ever worked with 0.75 cloth, you know that stuff explodes in your hand, right? And you have to be ultra careful with it, or you've got a little disaster on your hand. I just don't care enough, right? I'm using 1.4. It works for me. It lays down really nice, um, and uh, I don't have to fight with it. 
I like it. Um, that's what I'm doing. If you want to do it, great. If you want to use your four ounce cloth that I've seen some using, or go back to using the lightest stuff you possibly can, great. Again, do what works for you. This is what's going to work for us here, right? Um, and I'll, it's the other thing, surface prep, right? Here, so here's the vertical fence, right? Um, it's been framed up. You can see uh, it probably has a spot here that could use some wood filler uh, that I can feel with my finger and whatnot. But this is only 16th inch sheeting. Uh, if I go ahead and try and actually fill that and sand that in, we're going to deal with bigger problems with the sheeting bending between the ribs and all this nonsense um, and creating a starved horse effect. So I generally, unless it's a real big problem, perhaps where it meets up with the leading edge or something, I don't sand the raw wood at, at this point. I'm just going to glass it and then I'll deal with it afterwards. And I find out myself anyhow, it works out a lot better for me. All right. I've also, if anything, this thing has only been sanded or even the other part here, here's a, uh, an elevator for you. Um, right. I've only gone to maybe 80 grit, 120 at the most, depending on what happened to be on my block at the time. It might be worn out 80 grit I was using, right? This side is fiberglass, as you can see, color's a little different, right? This side is not. Um, I don't go through great lengths in uh, sanding this stuff down to 300 grit before I glass it. I don't see the point. Um, we're going to, again, I'm going to roll on. I go from this surface here, which is, is I glassed this on Monday, I think, right? You can hear the zipper effect from the, uh, the peel ply, right? I'm going to go, now in this instance, some corrugation is going to go on here and things like that. Um, and we'll look at that uh, as we progress here. But the areas that need to be painted and whatnot, that's going to get primer put right on it, sand it in, any low spots found, dealt with with body filler, and then it's going back to primer and sandpaper, and that's it. Um, that's, our, that's our goal and what we're trying to get here. Um, so I just don't know why you need to put 300 grit sandpaper on this side before you go to glass if what you're done with is this anyhow. Um, I, I just don't get it, so I don't do it. And, Again, this is about trying to do the least amount of work sanding as possible, um, which is still a lot of sanding, as you guys know, if you're doing this at all. Um, so anyhow, let me uh, get a couple things set up here, and I'll be right back. Okay, here we are back. I got the parts just sitting here on top of some cups. I picked these up at the grocery store. Um, I just, you know, they're, they're, they're little drink cups, and I'll just set two cups there and then just lay the part on top of it to elevate it over my bench, right? Um, I've got a garbage bag laying down on top of my piece of drywall here to try and protect it. Um, okay. And here's our parts laying here with their peel, peel ply nearby. That's the one for the vertical fin. And here's the one that's going to go on. I think that's the rudder we're glassing on that side, um, which is a little different material. Um, right. And here's a Harbor Freight chip brush. All right. I'll show you what I do to them. Um, they come like this, right? Right, that's a full length chip brush there as compared to mine, all right? So I've given it a haircut. I also took thin CA and went around the base where the bristles go into the brush um, and just ran a quick bead through there and let that soak in for a couple minutes um, to keep, well, in an effort to keep the bristles from coming out in our, in our work as we go here. Um, now, if this were a wing, I would do this exactly the way you see it laying here. Um, it'd be a bigger, much bigger piece of cloth, a much bigger piece of wood, and I would just pour the resin right on top of here, cart it around or use the brush or what have you, um, and just let it soak through the cloth into the wood, right? I, and I do not thin my resin at all, okay? It's, I know there's some that swear by it. That's great. Works for you. I don't care. I'm doing it my way. Um, so in this instance, since it's just a piece, smaller piece of wood and I can position the cloth pretty easily, I have found that it's a little easier just to slap some on the wood, cart it around, then lay the gloss glass in it. So that's how I'm going to do these parts. Um, and you'll be with me the whole way. Um, I don't exactly have a tripod around here, so I'm going to find something to lean my phone against, uh, hopefully in an advantageous viewing angle, so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, this is probably going to involve a, I don't know, a... Uh, Let's see what we can find. Um, 
this is always a, an adventure for me. I need to get a proper tripod. Um, no, that's not doing it. We need to get you up a little higher, don't we? Uh, back in a sec. Okay, so I got, I got you sitting up on top of two rolls of sandpaper and some drywall mud. Um, anyhow, let me go ahead and I'm gonna, we're gonna glass these two parts real quick. Um, and then we'll take a look at the time today. And we're gonna let these things sit. Um, and you can rush it and pull them off. And I'm in Florida, so my heat's pretty decent down here right now. It's probably, the thermometer in the shop says it's 80 degrees. So the resin's gonna, gonna go off uh, pretty well anyhow. Um, but here's the deal. If you try to pull this stuff off while well, the epoxy's still green, meaning, you know, it's past that runny stage, it's, but it ain't brittle hard yet, and it's still gummy, I'm telling you, it's not gonna come off easy at all. Um, you're gonna think you really did something wrong, and uh, your experience with fiberglassing is not going to be a positive one. You really are better waiting for this stuff to cure to that brittle hard finish. Um, right now, so that'll be, you know, we'll just call it 24 hours since that's a, it'll be a pretty easy thing for me to accomplish. I think it's uh, relatively two o'clock here today. Um, so tomorrow afternoon sometime, I'll, uh, Hopefully do the last installment to our little uh, video here. Um, but meanwhile, I've taken some resin um, and I'm mixing, right? And again, we're going to mix for a good solid 60 seconds. I'm just kind of watching the timer on my phone here as this video runs. I'm about 40 seconds into my mix. Um, Got to make sure you mix your resin. Mix, mix, mix. Uh, that's the other thing. Work in small batches, guys. Um, the way this epoxy stuff works off, if you've never worked with it, um, if, if I had mixed up uh, enough to do all four parts, I'm looking to glass here today, um, which I'm only going to show you two of them, um, it would go off before I ever got to the last part anyhow. Um, even if you're doing a big part, just keep mixing small batches. With this stuff, if it's a lot of resin kept in a small container, I'm telling you, this thing's going to get so hot it'll melt the container if, you, if that happens. And this stuff's going to dry really fast on you. You need to get this stuff out to a thin state as fast as possible once you get it mixed up. Because you really only have uh, probably a realistic 10 to 15 minutes working time. And, and then you're done with it, right? So I'm going to set the glass aside. I'm just going to go ahead and pick this rudder up, or this vertical fin, right? And I take my chip brush, and I try and do this in a spot where I hope you can see what the heck I'm doing, right? And I'm just holding on to the part because this one happens to have a nice handle. And I'm going to get some resin on here. It doesn't really matter how thick or where it goes. I'll show you why in just a second. I just need to get some resin on the part, okay? And you're going to see why in, in two seconds, right? All right. So depending on where you're at, your grocery store may or may not do this. But mine, if you're in Florida, you know who Publix is. Um... And every so often, if you spend $50 of groceries, they'll sell you a gift card for gasoline with a $10 discount on 50 bucks. Where else are you gonna save 20% on gas, right? What a deal, go to Publix. Uh, all right, so now I'm just gonna take my gas card here, which is, I hope I already used this, this one. All right, and of course, I probably have too much resin on the part, that's fine. The excess, I'll just put back in the hopper here, right? Okay, and we're gonna cart it around. And I'm not really being cautious or careful about this other than trying not to make a mess, right? And if I didn't get the whole part covered, that's fine. It'll, it'll soak through the cloth from the top down, no problem at all. I just did this because I find this to be about the fastest way for me to get a bunch of resin on a piece of wood, right? That's it, no other reason. Um, I mean, I, I could make up a long-winded reason. Um, maybe I'll Google one like, uh, like somebody around likes to do, uh, not naming any names. Um, right, so there's that part, resin soaking into the wood, right? And oh my God, all that resin soaking into my wood. Duh, it's only going in a little bit, not a big deal. Okay. I'm going to take the cloth, and again, this is because it's a small piece of cloth I can, that I, I do it this way. 
And I was going to lay it in there. Okay. And you can see already in a couple spots, right, where it's starting to soak in. Now, if you've never worked with a gloss cloth, the wetter you get the cloth, the easier it is to work with. Okay? So don't, don't be afraid to let it get wet. Right? It needs to absorb some resin. Okay? So I'm just going to card that one on there. Okay? And the cloth is going to go ahead and start absorbing resin that's in that wood. Right? And while that's happening, right, we're in no rush. That stuff's in a thin state. I'm going to go over the other part and do the exact same thing to it. Okay, we're just going to get some resin on there, cart it around, and get the cloth on there. And then we'll deal with what's really going on. Okay, okay. Um, for those of you that are unaware, uh, and this has been an ongoing project for me, um, usually I get these things done a little faster, but uh, for those of you that know me, I've got a two year old daughter now, so airplanes don't, don't get built as a uh, uh, frequently, or in, I don't know, in the time allotted, I guess. Uh, I like to get them done in a little over a year. I think uh, we're one year into this project, um, and we don't have a fuselage yet. Um, so, anyhow, this is, uh, I've been working on this one since, I, I think I started it last uh, yeah, July or June. Um, and this is a Hostetler. 25% L19 bird dog is what we are constructing. Um, my first Hostetler design. Probably going to be my last Hostetler design. I'm not a fan of construction techniques here. Um, so I got a little buyer's remorse perhaps there. Uh, some people seem to like his stuff. Uh, I'm just, again, not, uh, not a fan. Um, the construction techniques and the way he does things is just not my, I find it to be really time consuming for no reason. I've taken some liberties along the way doing it my own way, but uh, I don't know, with, with where my, my desires and my airplane construction uh, future just don't involve uh, Wendell in the near future. He's got some stuff I like. Again, I just don't like his uh, techniques. I got kind of spoiled. Even building the Zeroli stuff, uh, it just goes together a little differently. I think a little easier. Um, I don't know, maybe my brain just likes it better. Uh, or what? Okay, so... And this piece of cloth is not without its flaws. It's got some dried up resin in it and stuff. Um, not a big deal. We're going to go ahead and use it because it's... Quite frankly, I'm waiting on more cloth to come. And this is all I got. So... Uh, but nothing body filler won't fix for me, right? So you watched me get that stuff in there and just card it around. All right, so now we're just going to spread this on there. And you'll notice I'm wearing gloves, right? So I don't have to eat the glue off my fingers tonight. As somebody, uh, our good friend Bob likes to say. Okay. So we're just going to card the cloth in. Now, right, this is pretty dry, right? I don't know if you guys, what, what, angle is for you guys that cloth is not really wet at all um in fact for a lot of guys they're probably thinking man that's on there pretty good you don't even need to use toilet paper <laughs> um yeah it's for peel ply to work this stuff has to be wet right not gobbing wet but you got to have a little shine to the surface because you need something to soak into the peel ply the peel ply must fog out 100 percent. not too shiny wet but it's got to be fogged okay or what you're trying to accomplish ain't gonna happen. It's that simple. Okay, so now I'm just, the, the drier areas, I'm gonna throw some more resin on, okay, where it, it didn't really get wet, wet. Okay, just using my chip brush, it's cut down here in a little resin, not a big deal. And I've used, used hardly any of the resin that's actually in my little hopper here. I'm gonna end up wasting a bunch of resin, it looks like. Um, I could have mixed, you know, way less. Uh, but, um, I'll show you, it'll just uh, help encapsulate my, my, uh, my sharps disposal, and the garbage men will love us better. Um, and I'm just going over the cloth in its dry areas, get it to 
the fog out and wet out. And in some areas, it's getting pretty wet, especially around the edges here. Again, wet cloth will work and conform and do its compound stuff. So that, that's what really gets the cloth going, right? And when I get in an area like up here where I got all this excess cloth, I just take my scissors and give it a haircut right now. Got to leave, your, leave yourself a good half inch or so, though, or the peel, getting the peel ply off will be more challenging later on. Um, you got to have some separation between the two parts, so you can't get them apart. Um, or it's at least more of an adventure. And a little dry spot there. And overall, this part is pretty dry, so I'm going to give it a little more resin to work with here, right? And then I'm going to take my card and card around this resin a little bit. Okay? And we could... Yeah, we could argue all day long about what too much resin looks like or not enough resin. Okay? I'm just showing you what I do. Okay? And important to note, the stuff I'm using does not work with polyester resin. Um, it's... I believe you would glue the cloth directly into your part very well. Okay. Although I know there's been some discussion that over in Australia there, they found some stuff that works with polyester resin. Well, that's not what I'm working with here. I'm working with epoxy. Okay. So this works. Okay. So that part is got hands. The cloth is really dry, actually. It's soaking in the Epoxy, not a problem. We're just going to add some more. Okay. Or maybe I'm just carding off more than I think I am. Okay. All right. So that part's got some good amount of resin on it. And we're going to go ahead and get some on the other one while the resin is, again, if I leave it in the cup, we're going to have a bigger problem in a hurry because this stuff's just going to kick off. And all my too much resin will just become a block. Okay. So. We gotta get it out of the hopper, okay? And I probably poured out a whole bunch more than we ever needed to, yep. And we'll just throw it back in, okay? I'm not going crazy squeegeeing off every last bit. I'm putting just a little tiny bit of pressure on our uh, discounted gas card here. Um, and of course, uh, you can use you know playing cards as a squeegee and things like that. I just happen to get a ton of gas cards. That's what I use. Okay. okay, so what you're looking to keep is just a little shiny surface now. Oh, you know what, this one, Here's the other thing, because the ACP peel ply is thicker, guess what that means? You need more resin on the surface for it to work. Um, it's been so long since I used the stuff, um, I almost forgot that. Um, <laughs> for it, that's the other advantage to the dress liner. You're gonna use less resin uh, as far as amount of, not, not less resin in the finished product, but less re resin used, period. Um, now we're talking about cost savings on materials, maybe, if you're really anal about it. Clearly, I'm not, right? Um, so actually, I may have gone a little too far with my drying up here um, due to me doing this demo that I forgot about. So I'm going to throw on, honestly, a little more resin than I normally do. We could always fix this. So you'll see with the peel ply what it does. It's going to take care of this anyhow. And if it doesn't fog, we can throw some on top. And it'll work just fine as well. In fact, maybe that'll be better in a way as far as our demo is concerned. All right. So these two parts are glass, right? But if you just let that cure off, we're going to have eh, a little hair in this one from the the brush coming apart a little bit and pick that out. All right, you're going to have a nightmare to sand and deal with and blah, 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 and this waxy bloom and all this BS. I introduce to you dress liner. All right, take it. Um, again, these are smaller parts, so this is a pretty easy thing. If you're working with bigger stuff, get a 
go con the old lady into helping you and a wing or something. I got to go get her to come out here and help me lay this stuff in because it's a much bigger part. Or, yeah, you fight with it. I've done them by myself. It's a pain. Okay. Um, and you can see it's already starting to fog out pretty quick. And this part was pretty dry, right? And I'm just work. Once it gets wet, I'm pushing it around with my fingers where it bunched up a little bit on me. All right. I'm working it in to the resin a little bit. I'm just going to squeegee it really fast like I'm doing here. Okay. And I let that sit for a second while I go over to the other part and give it its, give it, give it some attention. And I got my little fan on over there, so I got to careful how it's blowing stuff. Um, okay. All right. So now this one, I expect this one to work a little different since it's this other material that I I got away from using. Okay. But we're gonna it's gonna do the same thing. It's not gonna do the compound curve around the top very well. Um, but what I'm hoping to do is demonstrate the difference in ability to release when we go to pull these things apart tomorrow, right? right. I'm sure somebody's going to push fast forward. I think this video is getting upwards of uh, 20 or 30 minutes now. Right. Now, I don't know how well you can tell, but this stuff well, it is wetting out. <laughs> it didn't do it near as fast. All right. And I'm certainly going to have, even with all that excess resin you watched me put on, this is going to need more resin. Okay. So now that I got the peel play on there, right? Let me show you a couple things that, well, it's easy. Hopefully I don't gum up my phone too much. See this part? how it's pretty well fogged out, that'll work. When that comes off, that surface will be pretty good, right? See this surface where it's not wet out? If I leave that the way it is, we're gonna be very unhappy with our results. Okay, we gotta get this on there. If this is what you're doing, you're gonna be very upset because you're gonna have low spots anywhere it's not fogged out. Okay, so let me show you what we're going to do about it. Okay, we'll prompt you. Oh, tripod. I mean, it's got three things, so it qualifies as a tripod, right? All right. Now, first thing, the, the vertical stab actually looks really good. I'm, I don't know that we need to do anything else to it. I'm just going to rub in the leading edge a little bit and we'll deal with whatever it does afterwards um eh. it's a little dry so again if it's a little dry guess what it's just resin guys put a little on there okay and work it with your card not a big deal and the resin in the pot i can feel just started to go a little bit so we need to work pretty quick or I'm going to have to mix up and waste some more resin. Okay. Now, again, the peel ply, all this resin I just put on there, and it's way too much resin, the peel ply will handle that. It will come off, and this will become a non-issue. Okay. I just didn't want to get it on there too dry. Um, this part in particular, um, this is going to be a, a painted part you're looking at. Um, the other part, actually... How many parts of that get painted? This is, uh, if you're familiar with uh, Cessna and Bird Dog, blah, blah, blah. Um, I've got corrugations to, to deal with on this one. So, well, crap. We're going to lose this batch, um, I think, just from letting it sit. Well, I'm going to try and make it work. Maybe we'll learn something else while we're here. Okay, but anywhere it's dry, I'm just going to paint right over it. The areas that are fogged, are, are on. We don't really need to worry about them. Now this part, because the corrugations are going on, I'm glassing it more or less just to seal the wood. And the peel ply is creating, right, here's the other neat thing, a 100% ready for secondary bonding surface for me. And I've got this stuff from Park Fire Plastics I'm just gluing on um, to create our corrugated faux look. 
Um, and uh, it's, it's worked out rather well for me this way. So I'm going to just give this stuff a little bit of a haircut because the excess peel ply adds weight and creates bubbles sometimes around the edges, which you don't want. Um, in some instances, you want the weight of the peel ply. Um, so you got to you got to practice and see how that what I'm you know how that all comes out and play for you. But I'm going to go ahead now. Okay, and squeeze you off this excess. And yeah, we're sitting on top of these cups and I keep sliding off whatever. Okay. Yeah, this stuff is just because the stuff was sitting in the pot, it's uh, the resin's gone. That's fine. The peel ply will do everything we need. Okay. And I'm just working it. And remember, this is the thicker stuff, so it, it does have quite a bit more resin in it by comparison. Um, keep touching it it's putting little dimples but it'll all flow out and be all right okay I think I'm done with the card let's throw that out take a look at our little curve here to see it let me set this part a little further away from my big clumsy self okay now this stuff especially the stuff from ACP the dress liner will do a compound curve ish. The ACP stuff does not do compound curves, right? And I got this little bit of a compound curve here. Now what you can do is you can add some clothespins or something to that to help your situation. Okay? Um, Cause it's just that the way it's draping around the edge there, you just need to pull down on it some. And I'll, uh, I'll give you guys a closer view here in a second, but I'm going to add a couple of binder clips um, in an effort to try and help with the, the peel ply uh, no sand uh, theory here. Um, this again, the, the thinner stuff does this quite a bit better, um, but the, the weight from these binder clips will help hold the cloth down and yeah, it's not going to be perfect, um, but uh, yeah, nothing a little 60 or 80 grit won't uh, solve. So that's that part is as is on there as I can. Let me sh show you what we got, okay? So you can see the shiny stuff coming to the top, right? That's the excess resin. It's not a big deal. The cloth is on the wood. It's, it, you'd see through it if you couldn't, right? And I, right, and it's eh, this compound curve over here again is just going to be a, a bit of a thing. Here you can see it's much better, but I don't have enough weight on there really. Um, yeah, it's all right. The other part, um, you can see I have nowhere near as much resin in it. That stuff there, um, I think personally, I like it a little better. Anyhow, these two parts are now glassed, and uh, let me show you my sharps disposal. Um, somebody on the site showed me this a while back and I started doing it um, a couple years ago now. This is my second one. Every time I use up a razor blade, straight pen or whatever, I throw it in one of these cups. And every time we use too much resin, I dump the resin in there. Thus encapsulating forevermore my sharps so that our garbage men and women don't have to get stuck because some idiot in a garage threw away a razor blade. What do you think? Uh, so anyhow, we'll uh, 
We'll check back with you guys in 24 hours. We're gonna peel off the ply. Um, so, and then we'll uh, we'll see what the, the the finished product looks like in a couple spots, and we'll go from there. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I got two more parts to glass up here um, today while I'm doing this. So another batch of resin's about to get made up, and uh, we'll get those done, and we'll see you on the flip side. See ya. Okay, here we are back. Um, hasn't quite been 24 hours, but we'll call it 24 hour ish, right? It's uh, it's actually 12 o'clock. I think we did this at two yesterday. Um, here's our two parts. This one being one with the stuff from ACP. I double checked the pricing on this stuff earlier. Right now, I buy my fabric and for my regular general uh, glassing stuff, I'm going to do it around 30 yards usually when I purchase stuff. You get a, you know, it's right around where one of their price breaks lie. Um, so that gets it down to around $7.50 a yard for this stuff from ACP. Um, Fabric.com, which for, I think that's what it's called. Um, I looked it up earlier. Right now, I want to say it's like $2.53 a yard um, for... The stuff that I'm, I actually prefer using. Uh, but I wanted to go ahead and, uh, and show you the release of this stuff. Um, right? Um, this one looks like it's probably going to come off mostly okay. There's one spot here where the edge of the glass got uh, put on there. Um, so I'm just going to peel that apart carefully. Um, yeah, there it was. It was no big deal. Um, right? So... Let me double check our view. All right, so we'll do uh, we'll do the vertical fin first. It's here again. This is the fabric store, 100% polyester stuff. Um, again, I buy it online. The local fabric store for me is about a 25 minute drive, and it's full of crabby old women. Uh, so I just generally stay away. Um, I buy it online. They bring it here. I don't have to worry about it, right? So all you're gonna do is catch the edge of it. Pull it back over itself, right? Okay, and get it started. Once you get it started, that's pretty much it. Just continue to pull. Now, I mean, that took some steady pressure, but not a whole lot, right? And there it is, it's off. No release agent, no nothing, just the fabric. Um, it works. It works good, the stuff is thin. Um, Again, I iron it before I put it on. Um, however, what just came off of here, and I don't know how good your view is, um, this is not reusable in any way, shape, form, or another, right? It's totally saturated with epoxy, um, right? I mean, it's, uh, there, I, I just put a hard crease in it. Um, you know, if it was still fabric-y, it doesn't do that, right? So, it's toast, right? So we'll just, we'll just toss that. Um, and then what's left, you just take, uh, I like to trim with a razor, with a, a, a on the way to being dull razor blade first, and then I just hit it with whatever is on my sanding block at the time to clean up the edges. Um, this 1.4 ounce stuff sands off pretty easy. Um, leading edge may need a little touch up with a piece of cloth, and I'll just use some CA for that or something, just to do it real quick. But this gave us a 100% no sanding needed. Now, again, it has some texture, sure. We're ready for primer, guys. Right now, we're ready for primer. Um, glassing without peel ply, you're ready for sandpaper. I freaking hate sandpaper. So, that's what this is about for me, is saving the sanding. Um, so, we'll go to primer, um, and we'll start filling our lows, uh, things like that. Um, and uh, chase the pinholes out of it. Usually it, it's rolled on, block sanded with 120, fill the lows, block that with 120, spray primer, chase the pinholes, block that with 220, spray primer, chase the pinholes again if there are some, and then I get it up to around 320 grit at that point. Once I'm there, I'm ready for panel lines and riveting and, and that type of stuff. I don't go any further than 320 grit on a Warbird that's gonna get painted with latex paint from Home Depot. Um, 
I'll see if I can get you over to my KO100 here before the video is over and show you my finish. Um, with flat paint and all that, you, you just really don't need to go any further. Um, now, if you're going to do something shiny and, and all that, you may need to go for 600 grit or something because um, it'll show it a lot more. Uh, it all depends on what you're looking for in a finish. Um, for my Warbird stuff, 320 is all I do. So there's a vertical fin ready for a, a cleanup job. Okay. Now here's the stuff from ACP. This is, uh, so this is the rudder, um, right? And it's got a lot of excess resin on top um, and things like that. Um, but this stuff, uh, again, it's a little thicker. It used a lot more resin to get it to saturate by comparison. It also doesn't do the compound curve as well. Um, and it's, um, I don't know, my math, a little over double the price. I don't see double the performance, guys. I really don't. If anything, I think it performs worse, personally. Um, but we'll go ahead and release it. Um, and you're just going to have to take my word for it. I honestly think my effort's about the same. I don't think there's any difference in how much effort I'm using to pull this off of here. Um, so, whatever release agent that they're using, uh, I just, I, maybe in a vacuum bagging situation, the, the, the things are different. Um, but there it is. It's off, right? Um, and you can see this is not going to be a reusable thing. It's totally saturated out with epoxy. And again, I didn't, this has been sitting, this stuff is rock hard. Um, Probably another 24 hours before it's uh, as hard as wet systems would get right now. But this stuff is zipped, you know, you can hear my nails on it. It is, you know, um, it's done. Um, my U.S. Composites resin is, uh, that's what it does for you. Um, and it does, you know, the, the weave that's in this stuff is what's left on the surface. And I'd say the, looking at the two, um, you know, the fabric store stuff's going to be a little finer weave. Not a big deal as far as my surface prep goes. Um, but check this out, right? So this is going to get corrugation put on it. That surface I have right there, um, I have this stuff from Park Flyer Plastics um, that I'll cut up. And essentially, I'm just going to use some finishing resin on the back of this stuff. Um, or actually, I'll put it right on there, squeegee as thin as possible. And then I'm just going to stick this right on there. You know, obviously, it'll be trimmed down and all that. But that's all, you know, that's, that's all I'm applying to there. Um, the other thing, as far as secondary bonding goes, if you needed a structural bond to this with another part, let's say this is a, a horizontal stab, and you're going to glue that into a fuselage, and you glassed it first, um, that area that has, that needs to be epoxied into the fuselage, you don't need to do anything to it whatsoever, except put your structural epoxy on there and get your, your horizontal stab in place. That's it. There's no sanding, there's no, no messing with it, it's nothing, um, right? You can see the other side's already been done, right? I'm gonna have to do the hinge line, um, so I'll, I'll block this up like so and get a piece of cloth in there. Um, or I'll just put some resin in there and sand it. I don't know, we'll see what we do. Um, that's in a pretty visible spot. I may go ahead and glass it just to help with the stuff. Um, but that's pretty much it. We're gonna clean up the cloth here. And these parts are, are fiberglassed. Um, I'm nowhere close to being ready for paint and whatnot on this airplane. Um, but let me show you what I'm doing here. All right, here is the aileron that I did take all the way through to, or no, sorry, this is not an aileron. This is a flap. Um, but I took that all the way to having the corrugation on it, right? Rivet detail. Um, here you can see the way I, I got the ends lined up. Um, the way that works out, there's my 
and we're not using a phone for a camera we're fighting a little bit right that's where the push rod connects and there's the g10 i made uh my hinges uh, and this side you can see has the glue drops down for the rivets that has yet to been primered i had a little more work i wanted to do over here first before i shot more primer little body fill area there nothing nothing major but that's what we're doing um that's why i'm using peel ply how i'm using peel ply where i get my stuff from uh, right it's all there for you um if you have any questions feel free to uh email me my email is marmbrust at bellsouth.net that's m a r m b r u s t at bellsouth.net so over here, here's my KI-100, a little dust on it. And I don't know if the camera is going to do what I want it to here. Um, you know, but that's got rivets and detail in it and all that. So I, like I said, I can get a pretty decent finish in my opinion um, for Warbird stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else around here that I fiberglassed. Um, that new port there is... A little different so anyhow i uh i hope i helped you out with this peel ply nonsense um and what we're doing for uh glassing techniques um i got a whole bunch more building to do i mean the wings are over here right clearly they need more sheeting um i gotta get servos in them and all that top sheeting will go on um and then all that's left is the fuselage fuselage i think will go pretty quick um all the other parts are done um so this bird dog's going to come together pretty quick i hope um we'll see how my my summertime schedule works out here at any rate thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time